Hi there, Jay Tedeschi, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist with Autodesk here. Today we're going to take a look at some of the assembly modeling capabilities of Inventor Pro 2016. We'll start here with our Spark printer and uh, drill down into one of the subs. You'll notice that as we do so we are out automatically of the express mode into the full full load of the assembly. And we're going to begin by building a little sub-assembly here. This is uh, the slider plate for the linear drive. Uh, we're going to pop in uh, basically just a guide. And we'll place that here, um, populating this sub-assembly, and take advantage of some of the joints. Uh, this is very similar to um, the constraint environment. However, uh, the joints which were introduced to Inventor several years ago uh, are significantly more advantageous if you are following up the design with uh, any any sort of dynamic simulation where joints are used as opposed to constraints. In the past, uh, the, if you use constraints, those constraints are automatically uh, converted to joints in dynamic sim. Uh, however, this uh, this basically eliminates that the need for that if you use joints. You'll notice, however, I am still using constraints where it makes sense. Uh, and this is one of those areas. So for example, I uh, not only do I want to set this new assembly here flush to the back of the linear slider, but we want to determine some distance of linear travel that this uh, constraint is going to, you know, later on we're going to use this to drive the assembly. So 170 millimeters of motion on this linear slide. Let's roll around to the other side here. and let's begin by placing another component. Now this time we're going to take a look at utilizing some of the AnyCAD capabilities here. Now uh, we're loading up a CAT product. This is a CATIA, small CATIA assembly. Uh, you'll note that we are uh, linking it. We're not converting it. Uh, we have the ability when we link these from the uh, manufacturer's native files to essentially uh, do selective import. And in this case, there are only four parts that make up this little assembly, this linear slider assembly. Uh, so we're pulling all four in, but we do have the capability of, of uh, selectively importing only those com components that we really need. In this case, uh, it's not that heavy of a subassembly, so we'll just leave it as is. Again, we're going to utilize uh, the joint environment, and we'll go ahead and place this uh, rotational joint here uh, right where the slider attaches to the entire sliding assembly and we're going to align essentially these two back faces so the back face here of the nylon slider we'll select through the part pick that back face and we'll pick this front face right here so those are now in alignment now let's add another joint this one's going to be a cylindrical slider, so we'll pick right on that cylindrical edge and we'll pick the, uh, the, the long rod that it slides on as well. And voila! Now the whole, the whole point here is that we are determining the, the motion environment for our assembly. Now we're going to use a pattern array to essentially, uh, a rectangular pattern, we're going to essentially copy this uh, in a linear fashion along the side of the linear slider uh, trolley and we'll do we'll then use copy and uh, we'll just essentially uh, pattern using a rotational pattern let's pick these two components and let's pattern them around the center axis of the entire tray right there and we want two at 180 degrees beautiful Hopefully you're starting to see how quickly and easily this uh, rather not complex assembly but uh, not a simplified one either was put together through a combination of uh, utilizing AnyCAD to take advantage of some uh, components which were created by uh, one of our other divisions uh, utilizing CATIA as opposed to uh, in the native software that we, I am using which is Inventor. Uh, in interference checking is used to ensure that there is no interference. And finally, let's go into Content Center and place a couple of fasteners. We can filter out based on DIN. I want to see only the DIN socket head fasteners. We'll select this one right here. You'll note that once I pick, we are able to selectively from the catalog pick only those lengths which can be purchased as well as auto-populate all of the holes in the array. 
key takeaway here is that Bill of Materials is always going to be updated and kept up to date uh, based on these uh, additions to the assembly. Now based on the uh, values that we entered in when we added that first constraint, that cylindrical constraint, uh, we're able to drive this back and forth uh, and evaluate the motion uh, showing that the linear sliding assembly in, in that it goes through in its normal range of motion. And with that, I want to thank you for your time and I'll look forward to seeing you again.